The Awakening skills on legendary tier flagships are very powerful, but I had a few questions about how they worked, and so I reached out to the makers of Infinite Galaxy, and they gave me some answers. So stick around in this video for the very best Awakening skills in Infinite Galaxy and some information about how these mechanics work. Hello my friends and welcome back, I'm Chisco Gaming, and in this video sponsored by the makers of Infinite Galaxy, I'd like to share some information with you provided to me by the makers of Infinite Galaxy about the way that these very powerful Awakening skills work. Now, if you're not familiar, the Awakening skills are only on legendary tier flagships. They unlock when your flagship hits rank 7, and there is a higher level that I think you can unlock around rank 10 or so. You definitely have it by rank 11 on your flagships. So this is a very powerful effect. It does damage. It's got a cooldown. And on all of them, there's some buff or debuff, which led me to some important questions. The first question I had is that I noticed some of these awakening skills, like the Cyclops boosts cruiser attack, and the Hephaestus, that's also boosting warship attack. I was sort of curious, do these abilities stack? If they fire off at the same time, do I get the benefit of both of them together? And the answer was yes. Similarly, debuffs on enemies also stack. So that was a really important answer that I thought was very helpful to get. But the next question also was really important in helping evaluate, in my opinion, and again, this is about my opinion, which of these awakening skills is the very best? And the question was, what happens if you're battling against a bunch of other fleets. In other words, there's a huge pileup, okay? A big fight where a bunch of your alliance members join the fight and a bunch of enemy alliance members join the fight and there's dozens of fleets. What happens with this minus 22% warship attack? Because if that were to apply to every enemy warship, I mean, it's busted good. No doubt about it, the debuffs will be the best awakening skills by far. And the answer I got is that your own side's buffs are only effective for the fleet you lead, and um, the enemy debuffs, the things that debuff an enemy, will be applicable to every fleet that's there, but as the number of enemy fleets increases, the effect weakens. So these debuffs, like this minus 11% attack that you would get from the Hephaestus here, um, would apply to every enemy fleet, but based on the number of fleets they have, the effect will diminish in strength. I'd like to think that the whole thing is balanced, so that in reality, buffs and debuffs are actually equally valuable. But I thought that was a really helpful insight into the way these works, because, man, if these did work differently, I would have been doing some serious gaming around bringing the maximum number of debuffs possible. So let's very quickly review the Awakening skills, and I'll tell you which ones I think are the very best. Let's start with the Artemis. It gives you frigate armor. Now, I think this is kind of cool because the Artemis is all about being tanky, but at the same time, I would have really loved if this ability brought more punch. That, to me, would have rounded out everything the Artemis is doing really well and would make your frigates just insanely tanky and deadly. So, yes, it makes your frigates more tanky, no, I'm not exactly sure that's what I wanted to do with my frigates in a perfect world. Uh, but of course, that's what a secondary flagship, an auxiliary flagship is for, to sort of accentuate what you want your pair to do. Uh, I currently pair it with the Orion, and I go very tanky, so I'm all in on the tank route for now. Uh, the next flagship I want to talk about is the Cyclops, increasing your cruiser attack by 50% for 6 seconds. I mean... Dude, the Cyclops is all about doing lots of damage, and it does more of that, which is pretty impressive. The next flagship on my list here is the Hephaestus. Total warship attack of 22%, and total warship attack of the enemy is reduced by 22%. That effect lasts for 5 seconds. I think this is actually very balanced. Hard to argue that it's, you know, not, <laughs> right? Like, a little bit of a buff, a little bit of a debuff. I like what's going on there, uh, and... Honestly, could be an okay candidate for pairing with the Artemis, except the weapon typing here is a little bit weird. It's a laser weapon. Artemis, you wouldn't want laser weapon pairing. Now, the Achilles I'll talk about, although I don't think you should be using this for fighting. Uh, this is going to 
reduce enemy warship attack by 36%. That lasts for five seconds, uh, which is pretty strong. Fires off every 11 seconds. That's the cooldown. Now, the destroyer flagship has an uh, awakening skill that gives you attack and armor. See, this is the more balanced approach. I love that about the Hades. It's so balanced. It's got attack. It's got defense. It's just very, very well-rounded. This is on my short list of flagships that I really want to go work on. In fact, I'm saving a bunch of Federation advanced credits that I'll probably dump into the Hades sooner than later. It's so good for destroyers. It's such an obvious choice. Um, very strong. Really happy with that awakening skill. Up next is an awakening skill that I think is actually insanely savage. Probably one of the better ones. You take out 126% of enemy warship armor for four seconds. That's gross. I, I, I mean, that seems very strong. If you're up against any flagship that is not boosting armor and you smash them with this, I don't know what happens if you, like, reduce their armor to zero, but it seems bad. So, yeah, uh, minus 126% armor removal. I don't understand exactly how those mechanics work, but it seems very strong to me and is, in my opinion, one of the stronger effects. And there is another flagship that has that, but we'll talk about that in a second. Up next is the Odysseus, and they've got a 20% shield restoration effect, which is kind of gangbuster. This is on a 14-second cooldown. Uh, hit recovers some of your fleet's shields. So, I mean, hit recovers some of your fleet's shields? I don't know if that means when you get hit, you recover shields, or when it fires off, you recover shields. But restoring 20% of your shields is a very powerful effect for giving your fleet sustain and I think it's really good for any set of flagships, okay? Any set of flagships where they have skills that care about being less than 70%. Because for skills that care about being low health, if you have something that's constantly restoring shields, then they'll be alive longer when they're in that lower health range and they'll be more effective. I think this is a unique effect. One of the more powerful effects, honestly. Um, but this, again, is all my opinion. Testing will reveal uh, how good they are. Exactly. And last but not least, the Eye of Wisdom on the Athena. Uh, uh, wow, 130% armor reduction. Cooldown of 13 seconds lasts for 5 seconds. I really think these armor reduction effects are very powerful. Athena is a little bit of a weird flagship. It's all about boosting its own damage, which I'm, I'm not entirely convinced that's the meta right now, but I also haven't played with it, uh, so it's hard to say if I'm right or wrong on that. The two flagships I haven't unlocked yet include the Poseidon. Now, this isn't even available in-game. Increases warship armor by 116% for six seconds. This is amazing. I think this would pair really well with any of these other flagships that don't have tankiness. Um, now, I will say they've got missile typing, so it seems like the most natural pair for a T-10 is probably the Hades and the Poseidon. I think that'd be very, really very powerful. Um, because of this missile typing, but uh, a very strong effect. I don't think it's as strong as the effects that reduce enemy armor, because in part, these effects that debuff everybody, they're like team player effects, right? Like, everybody hitting the enemy is going to get a benefit, whereas things that buff yourself mean they only help yourself, right? So I prefer debuffs to buffs by a long shot. Uh, last but not least, the Prometheus. Reduces uh, the total warship attack by 40% of enemies for 5 seconds. Like I said, I love debuffs. Reducing enemy attack um, is a really nice way to improve your own tankiness. And again, this is a team-oriented effect. Uh, every fleet that is involved in the fight on your side benefits when the enemy has less attack. And as I talked about at the start of this, this effect does weaken based on the number of fleets that you're debuffing, as do all debuffing effects here. But... I think it's a pretty strong effect. So, I mean, all in all, I think that the Awakening effects are really exceptional. Uh, they add some strategic depth, and although we don't have a ton of flagship choices yet, I mean, this game is very young. I imagine that over time, there may be more flagships that get added, and the Awakening skills will give us more possibilities and combinations, and I think all of that is very exciting. But... Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. What do you think of these awakening skills and how they work? For me, it was very educational to learn uh, some of those uh, nuances about how they stack and how it affects a big fight with lots of enemies. Uh, and ultimately, it has 
probably not changed what I would say is the very best. I was still kind of keen on those armor reduction debuffs being very top tier. But at the end of the day, I'm ultimately not picking any of these flagships that have the armor reduction, funny enough. I'm still going for the ones that I think will be just really great all frigate, all destroyer, and all cruiser fleets, and that's going to involve the Artemis with the Orion. That's going to involve the Hades with probably the Hephaestus, and then when I'm not using my destroyers, it'll be the Cyclops with the Hephaestus. That's most likely how I'm going to do that until I have enough credits to invest in something else. If you found this video helpful, throw a like on here and consider subscribing. Thanks again to the makers of Infinite Galaxy for sponsoring this video, and until next time, you have fun smashing your nebula.